It's so wonderful to see faces out here. Hey. Oh, I'm so happy. You don't realize how hard it is to do a taping and not see an empty pews. So we are so happy to have you all here again. Take this moment to turn off those cell phones. Please make sure that they're off. And at this point, I would like us all to bow our heads and have a moment of silence for those people in the Ukraine. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom. Tonight, we, of course, are commemorating Purim, among other things. But you know, I was reading the Megillah, studying for, as I do each year, for Purim, because we glean, every time we open a book, we glean from it something different. That's why we read the Torah. Each year, the cycle begins, and each year, the cycle ends, and then it begins again, because each time we open it, there's something new that is learned from it. This is also this particular Shabbat is called Shabbat Zachar. Zachar means to remember. It's the Sabbath immediately preceding Purim. And when I was thinking about it, because it talks about a Amalek, you know, the story of Purim talks about the enemies of the people of Israel after they had been excluded from their country and dispersed all over. Some of them settled in Persia, as it was known then. And of course, we all know the story of Purim, how Haman tried to destroy the people. And I was thinking about this when I read the newspaper and watch the t television about what's going on in Ukraine, the indiscriminate killing and murdering of innocent people. And I'll have something to say about it later, but. I couldn't help but think Purim is a celebration of redemption and perhaps our service this evening will get the redemption that they need so badly going so that they can once again see freedom, not only for their people, but also freedom from the fear of death and destruction, indiscriminate death and destruction. So today we not only dedicate our service to the holiday of Purim, Purim also is four weeks before Passover. It's the entree, if you will, into the beginning of the new calendar year in the Hebrew calendar. Nisan is technically the first month of the year, not Tishrei. And so, Passover begins our season because Passover represents our liberation. So here we are four weeks before Passover celebrating and commemorating Purim and also praying in our hearts of hearts for the liberation and salvation of these unfortunate people being massacred every single day. Let us join now and turn to page 38 as we light the Shabbat candles. But before we do, we're gonna have the choir sing Siyah Hamba, bring a little joy, even in our adversity, we should always think of joy as well.
Silverman will be laying in camp. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kedushanu B'Mitzvitanu B'Tzivanu L'Hadlik Ne'er Shel Shabbat We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe, who hallow us with your mitzvot and command us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. May we be blessed with Shabbat joy. Amen. May we be blessed with Shabbat peace. Amen. May we be blessed with Shabbat light. Amen. And you're lighting the candles, I hope, will give us a blessing of peace. The world certainly needs it now more than ever. Thank you. <clears throat> and now, join with the Cantor and Choir, page 46. Lechado, do you welcome the Sabbath bride? Now let us turn to page 49 as we introduce the affirmation and the blessings of opening our service. I now call Charlotte Kearns and Mel Graham to open the ark. Let us please stand.
650, The Call to Worship. standing as we close the ark. Thank you. And we turn to page 51 and we join together in the affirmation of our faith, the declaration that declares God is the God of Israel. Everyone together, hear, O Israel, the Eternal One is our God, the Eternal God alone. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. Please be seated. We continue on page 52, and the cantor renders the Via Hafta, asking us to remember to love God with all our hearts and with all our minds. Let us now turn to page 53 as we read responsively. All this we hold to be true and sure. You alone are God, there is none else, and we are Israel, your people. You do wonders without number, marvels that pass our understanding. You did wonders for us in the land of Egypt, miracles and marvels in the land of Pharaoh. When your children witnessed your power, they extolled you and gave you thanks. Willingly, they enthroned you 
and full of joy, Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang this song. This song, Michamocha, chanted by Miriam as the people were crossing and eventually crossed the sea. To me, I would dedicate it tonight to all the women who have served the rabbinate for the last 50 years. This is the 50th anniversary of women serving as rabbis. Mi kamocha. Page 55. Page 55, we find the covenant of Shabbat, the admonition that is given to us in the Torah not to forget and to always remember the gift of Shabbat. Please turn to page 56.
Page 56 at the bottom of the page, let us read together. Praise be our God, the God of our fathers and our mothers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, God of Sarah, God of Rebekah, God of Leah, and God of Rachel, great, mighty, and awesome God, God supreme, ruler of all the living. Your ways are ways of love. You remember the faithfulness of your ancestors and in love bring redemption to their children's children for the sake of your name. You are our sovereign and our help, our redeemer and our shield. We praise you, eternal one, shield of Abraham, protector of Sarah. I may have said this before, but it's very important to understand why this particular prayer mentions God each time it mentions a name rather than saying God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the reason for it is written in the Talmud, it tells us, it's to emphasize that God is the God of each of us, collectively and individually. And so the emphasis being God of us, God of you, God of him, God of her. To remember, God is all part of us, again, individually as well as collectively. And now the cantor and choir will render the Yismachu. on page 64 to have some private meditation. You will notice in all the prayers throughout the prayer book, and I mentioned this before, but it's worth saying again, especially during these trying times, 
our prayers are written in the plural because we are responsible one for the other. But this particular prayer, and there are opportunities throughout our liturgy where there will be individual prayers. And that's to teach us also that we have an opportunity, even though we are responsible for each other, an opportunity to say things that are in our hearts and on our minds, especially and especially during these trying times. So let us remember, God listens. All we have to do is open our hearts. and that peace will reign not only in heaven but among all of us throughout the world. Amen. And now I'm going to ask all those who have family or friends who are experiencing some illness to call out the names so that we can have them in our hearts and minds when we render the Mishaberuch prayer asking God to help us find the healing that we so desperately need. All of us, I know, pray for health. So let us now turn to the inside cover of our prayer book as we join together with the Cantor and Choir, asking God to help us find the healing we need so desperately.
portion of the service where we have scriptural reading, reading from the Torah. We ask you to turn to page 142 and rise. And now I'll call for our rabbis, Carol Vialis and Alan Baer. let the rain come and wash away the ancient grudges, the bitter hatreds held and nurtured by generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of hurt and neglect. Then let the sun come out and fill the sky with rainbow. Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we are broken. Let it burn away the, the fog so that we can see each other clearly so that we can see beyond labels, beyond accents, gender, and skin color. Let the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness, so that we can share the joys and feel the sorrow of our neighbors. And let the light of the sun be strong, that we will see all people as our neighbors. Then let the earth, nourished by rain, bring forth flowers to surround, uh, surround us with beauty and let the mountains teach our hearts to reach upward, upward toward you, our Father in heaven. Amen. And I'll get it out. And once again, let us now turn to page 143 as we reaffirm our faith in God.
The portion that we are going to read this evening is from the third book of the Torah. It's called Vayikra, which means, and he called. It's talking about God's call to Moses to indicate certain things that are very important at this particular juncture. The third book of the Bible is really classified as the priestly book because in it are all the inscriptions and descriptions and admonitions about how the priest should perform their function, the cleanliness that was required. The priests had to cleanse themselves numerous times to ensure that not only were they pure in mind, but that their bodies were pure enough to be in the presence of God. Because when they came to the temple to perform the sacrificial rites, they had to be clean and unblemished. Even the animals that were used for sacrifice, and this is the most difficult part of all of it, because to even contemplate killing animals to worship God seems kind of foreign for us today. But in those days, that's the way people felt they deserved to share their fortunes with God. When you had good crops, you brought the crops to the temple, the first of the crops, to show God that you were appreciative of the blessings that were given to them. And the animal sacrifices also had different rituals and different understandings and different connotations. So I don't think we should concentrate on judging whether we should sacrifice animals or not, but just to understand that the Bible was trying to teach us about holiness, trying to teach us that we have an obligation in any form or manner that we choose to worship. We have an understanding and an obligation to come with a pure heart so that our prayers and our supplications certainly have meaning and possibly will be heard by the God we say them to and for. <clears throat> so for the first honor, we're going to ask Chaim Ben Mayer. By the way, this is the one of the most difficult readings of the Torah. So if I, Fumfka, everybody know what that means? <laughs> yes. Baruch Adonai Baruch Leolam Boen. Amen. Vayikra el Moshe v'yadaber Adonai elav meo el moed. And God is talking to Moses and the outside of the tent. Lemor, and he says, Daber el b'nei Yisrael v'yomata lehem Adam ki yakriv karban ladonai. It's time to teach and to learn what the sacrifice to God is all about. Amen. And for the second and final Aliyah, we call Reuven Ben Moshe. I think everybody should stand and applaud. Bob is 99 years old. Bob, 
Baum is also a veteran of World War II, is that yeah. correct? Okay, one of the greatest generation. And we have been fortunate over the years to have Baum not only as part of our congregation, but he was chair of the ritual committee when I first came here. And um, that was almost 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and he's always been a supporter of this congregation in good times and is bad. So we wish you the very best. We wish that we will be able to stand here next year and celebrate 100 and the year after that and the year after that. <laughs> so no we pray. argument there. <laughs> <laughs> so we pray that God yes. gives you the strength. Well, of course, I don't know. I'm a Amen. <laughs> And it's talking about when you bring the first fruits or the grain that you want to um, dedicate to God and to the Torah that, to, uh, that you make sure it's satisfactory and that you cover it with oil. There's a whole ritual involved in presenting the appropriate sacrifices to God. Amen. Congratulations again. Thank you. Ken And now we're getting ready to return the Torah to the Ark, and we call for Hagba and Galila. Let us please stand. <clears throat> We're on page 146. Like our president said, it's absolutely phenomenal to be standing here and looking out and seeing smiling faces, familiar faces. I hope it's just the beginning of the return to normalcy, whatever that's going to be. And starting next month, we will hopefully resume the procession with the Torah so everybody can have an opportunity to participate with us as well in that regard.
Behold, a good doctrine has been given you, my Torah. Do not forsake it. It is a tree of life to those who hold it fast, and all who cling to it find happiness. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. <clears throat> seated. <clears throat> One of the great masters of Jewish learning and understanding was a man called Mordechai Kaplan. In fact, he was the founder of what is referred to as Reconstructionist Judaism. I don't know if anybody ever knew what that meant, but I can tell you one thing, he, he knew what it meant. And one of the classic expressions he uttered during his lifetime was, and it's so appropriate for today. So appropriate. The nations of the world are so preoccupied with their anxieties and ambitions that they do not realize that the very foundation of civilized life is being undermined. He wrote that 50 some odd years ago. And we are witnessing it today. We witnessed it again in all the wars that were fought, all the times that we spent burying loved ones and mourning them. Everything in the meantime that we experience right now seems so mundane given the daily experiences we read about. Death, destruction, hysteria, bravery, patronism, financial room. You put it all together in one mix, in one pot, and you have nothing but chaos. There is, seems to be no one who is able to stand up and offer words of a consolation and encouragement, not only to our nation, to a family, to a person, to the world. There is only faith that has been encouraged by the bravery and patriotism of a few. And don't think it doesn't take faith to march to what may come, death. Faith sustains us in all sorts of, of ordeals. Faith is the underlying ability to cope with adversity. Faith also allows us to understand without asking why. And faith helps us realize that there is good and there is evil. It's up to us to determine which will prevail. The prophets tell us, be of strong heart. Be of strong heart for our own sake and for the sake of all that are needlessly sacrificed. Sometimes, if you think about it, we find it difficult to understand everything that is happening. And so our faith is put to the test. 
Sometimes we can't even imagine a world so corrupt that our faith is shaken to the core. Sometimes we see death on such a large scale and hatred seething from the mouths of people we thought to be innocent that our faith is even driven into hiding. In our lifetime, all of our lifetimes, we have seen the lack of humanity so unimaginable that we shudder to think or even believe that it was possible, not then and not now. The world seems so polarized that we can't see the light because of all the darkness. And somewhere in that darkness is our faith. And we search and we hope that it will surface once more. All of us understand at this particular stage in our lives that life is so fragile and so short. I'm starting to clean out old files at home and old pictures and reading through the files and looking through the pictures. My life seemed to flash right before me. Where has the time gone? All of us ask the same question time and again. What has happened to all the dreams we had? People are no longer here that once graced our lives. The ranks are thinning, and with it all the laughter and tears of the generations that are no more. But then I stop for a moment, put the pictures down, close the book, and reality stepped back in. And I realized that that was then, and this is now. But somehow, the picture hasn't changed. None of us have really changed. We're aging, but the world seems to be in a standstill because the same threats and hurts and disappointments are there today as they were yesterday. The only difference is the date has changed. No wonder we lack the spirit, the spark, and the flame of faith that carried us to this moment in time. Think about it. When we were younger, we had hope, we had faith, we had dreams of things that will be, things we wanted to be, things that we wanted to do. And now civilization as we know it is being undermined by a new order of extinction. Once we faced an enemy and we knew whom they were and how to fight to win, once we rallied around the concept of survival that included all of humanity, not just me, it's for me. Everything today is me. Now we don't even know what is happening to us because we can't follow as things happen so fast. We look around and we see greed and despair killing on such a level that it appears there really is no hope, no expectation of renewal. And perhaps there are no words other than the silent words found in our hearts and minds that try to make sense of that which is senseless. We need the words found in our souls to emerge, to free us, to free us from the past and give us the res resoluteness to confront this evil that is right before us. And don't ask me how in our generation we can do anything about it because we can. Because those words will emerge and encourage so that we can overcome the madness we witness day in and day out. No imaginary wish or understanding will suffice when there is no one to reason with. So one of our responsibilities is to try 
to make sure people listen. We need to extend a hand of friendship that needs to be grasped, not by madness, but by friendship. So yes, Mordechai Kaplan understood this years ago, that civilization would be undermined by concern only for the few, with no care for the many. Me, me, me. That's what you hear time and time again. He tried to explain that parochialism is not the road to salvation, but a sure path to undermining the very principle of endurance. The lesson is so simple it escapes us. If we remain hostages to fright, we will in the end destroy ourselves. We see it here today, in this day, in this age. If we lose our resolve, then we will have relinquished our obligation to ourselves and to God, who gave us the ability to survive the ordeals of everyday living with a one-syllable word, faith. And this, my friends, is what Purim symbolizes, what the upcoming Passover holiday will symbolize. What the world is experiencing this moment in time can be found in scripture written thousands of years ago. As I mentioned, nothing has changed except the date. So I urge everyone to pray that the salvation we witnessed in Persia some 3,000 years ago will be repeated today so that we can wake up one day and see there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it certainly isn't a train trying to knock us over. Amen. always faced with trying to combat evil and we do look forward to the day when Elijah the prophet will announce the coming of the Messiah and we will all seek peace and what we'd like to offer you here is Eliyahu Honabi with some lyrics from Miriam as well and I want to translate them for you. Elijah the prophet Elijah the Tishbite, Elijah the Gileadite, come quickly in our days with the Messiah from the line of David. And then for Miriam, Miriam the prophet, strength and song in her hand, Miriam dance with us in order to increase the song of the world. Miriam dance with us in order to repair the world. Soon she will bring us to the waters of redemption.
Eliyahu Hanavi, it's Elijah the prophet. Our tradition teaches us that Elijah will be the forebearer of the coming of the messianic time, a time when all people will live in peace and harmony. <clears throat> and now we're going to ask about special birthdays and anniversaries. All of you who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, you're welcome to come forward. We have missed this for a long time, the blessings for birthdays and anniversaries. And then our president will read all the names of our congregants who are celebrating. For Michael and Helen Bernstein Abrams for their anniversary. These are anniversary people. Elliot and Barbara Reese. Richard and Susan Talber. Rabbi Irwin and Sandy Weiner. Oh. <laughs> Lawrence and Suzanne Lumber. <clears throat> Muscle tough. <laughs> Birthdays, muscle tough. Another year older and another year wiser. Susan Talber, Michael Freed, Ruth Lieberman, Art Sharp, Murray Siegel, Laura Blumberg, Martin Winter, Harvey Schwartz, Ellie Trachtenberg, who is probably with us in spirit back in Connecticut, in Massa, wherever she is, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Amy Heffler, Shirley Shillette, Diane Mendelson, Lee Ross, Betty Goodman, who's turning 90, Mesh Leviton, we pray for him, Barry Berger, our Vice President, Aline Zimmerman, Carolyn Brace, Jim Gold, Lisa Edson, Stanley Pincus, Lucy Geller, Jerry Kaplan, Sheldon Silverman, and our illustrious Robert Bob Stone. Well, needless to say, we are thrilled that you're here today. We're thrilled that people are starting to come back, and we're thrilled that you are celebrating milestones in your life. And we want to continue to celebrate those here in the place where celebrations should be celebrated. So we thank you for coming with us. We wish you the best, all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. God bless all of you and continue to give you strength and good health. And now the congregation will join in with the cantor and choir as we do the Shekhyonu prayer, thanking God for all the blessings we receive. of practice we keep dropping things. <laughs> anyway, God bless all of you and continue to have good health. Here's our first person. Sing your 
Hi, my name is Suzanne Rosenthal, and I'm originally from New York. But, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> it's a good place to be from. And I spent my work life in Los Angeles, and I moved to Arizona to be near my family. So I just moved here. Found out she lives around the corner from me. All right, I know there's somebody else here. Now, come on, don't be shy. Where are you? Come on, let's stand up. Come on, come on. They're from, wait to hear where they're from. Margie and Sunny White from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, we moved here a few months ago to be with our son, daughter-in-law, and their first child. And we are so blessed to be here with you. We've been looking for a congregation to share this time with you. And thank you so much for welcoming us into your your home and your congregation and your community. Thank you. Yeah, I did that for myself so I could hear them better too. Um, they were, when well, they came in, I for Tennessee, I say shalom, y'all. <laughs> and now the cantor will lead us in Kiddush, page 165. Boy, uh, oh, my, my oh, you have announcements. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. All right. I know this is something we haven't done in a long time, right, Jerry? <laughs> all right. First of all, I want to thank a wonderful person called Linda Brooks, who is our fundraiser. And Linda, please stand up. Please, please, please. Linda has been working tirelessly to get us some fundraising. And as many of you know, a couple of weeks ago we had a fundraiser at Brooklyn Bee's restaurant located across the street from the Safeway. It was highly successful. And uh, I, as I said, I want to thank Linda for putting it all together. Many of you were there and I want to thank you for your participation and remind you that we have another fundraiser coming up this Tuesday, March 15th, at Florendino's, which is up on Palma School, and it is for dinner only, and it is from four to eight, and make sure when you go, you let them know you're from the Sun Lakes Jewish Congregation, and you can also order curbside and do it online, you have to go to their website. And again, make sure that you announce that you are from Sun Lake Jewish Congregation. And that's all in the spiel, so if you read your spiel, you'll see that. Okay, next thing. The Jewish War Veterans is going to have an installation at their April luncheon, and they always are helping our vets. And their uh, Rabbi Wiener is going to be their guest speaker, and it will hold it on Sunday, April 10th at 11 a.m. in the Saguaro Room at Can uh, Cottonwood Country Club in Sun Lakes. They're also um, uh, having on their March 20th meeting. The JWE has a Nam Navy. Oh, I can't read. See, I told you I can't read with my glasses on. <laughs> Na the, the Navy Combat Vet D for person who served during the Operation Enduring and Iraq Freedom. And you, there is an article in the spiel about this speaker, and it sounds like she's going to be very, very interesting. All right, I think that's... Now, next thing. Sisterhood Car Party, coming up. Before we know it, April 11th at Cottonwood. See your again, see your spiel. That spiel is very important. See your spiel for more information, registration forms. Jerry Bull is taking reservations, so we hope that a lot of you can participate in that. Coming up in April is our Community Seder, which is April 16th at Palo Verde. 
I hope that you all received your email blast about the stair with reservation with the reservation form attached. Unfortunately, an error on our part. Sorry for not making in the spiel for this month. But if you do save your spiels like I do, you'll see you still see the reservation form. But there is one that was on the email. Um, I do want to make you aware that the cost of the Seder seems a high, and I know that, I understand that, we all understand that, but things are really going up everywhere, and if we don't have enough participation, we will have to cancel it, so just keep, we'll keep you updated on that. Okay, and any information you want, check with Wendy Goldstein. All right, there will be boxes of cake to take home when you leave. Please make sure you return your books. And of course, we always have to thank the people that make this happen. Rabbi, Rhonda, Lana, for the choir, you're great, love you. I told you that the other day. Yvonne. Our sound lady, Doug, who suck hides somewhere, he does our setup for us. Roxy, who gets our, whenever we do have an owning, but we have it just with the cakes as you leave. And the Rangers. I, I don't worry about him. I'll take care of him. Don't worry, I do that. He's special. Rangers who are out there for us to keep us safe. Thank you 100%. And okay, Shay. <laughs> he, 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 people don't know how talented this young man is. He's been with us forever, it seems like. He accompanies Rhonda and the choir. He also does this taping for us. And he goes home and spends four, five, six, I don't know how many hours, I don't even, and he edits it. And I've said this before, we can't thank him enough for what he does. <laughs> and again, thank you all. It is so nice to look out and see, as much as I can see you, I see all you smiling faces. I, you could just see with Rhonda when she was singing. There were bare smiles on her face when she was singing to people, not an empty <laughs> yeah. building. Yeah. And the rabbi, the same thing. And the choir, they're great. We love you all. Thank you so much for coming. And again, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> okay. We are now going to do the Kiddush. I think I got it right this time. The short version. Congratulations on your anniversary. <clears throat> and now we will start to wind down the service. We ask you to turn to page 148 for the adoration. And now Suzanne and Larry will open the yard for us. Please rise.
Please remain standing. Page 153 at the bottom of the page. However brief may be our time on earth, O oh God, you endow our fleeting days with a fighting word. We now recall the loved ones whom death has recently take up, taken from us, and let us think about those people that have perished in the Ukraine. And as we remember those who died at this season in years past, we take them into our hearts with our own. In this moment of memory, our griefs and sympathies are mingled. Loving God, we praise your name. And now, as we've done since the beginning of the pandemic, there will be a mole for all those who succumbed to this dreaded disease. Passionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, we ask you to grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to those who have succumbed to the pandemic and those who are facing death and have died in this Holocaust occurring now in Europe. May they all enter eternity. O oh God of mercy, let them all find refuge in your eternal presence and let their souls be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God surely is their inheritance. May they all rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. Amen. And now we are also commemorating the anniversaries of loved ones at this particular time. Herman Alter, 
Morris Berenzweig, Barry Burke, Harry Bernstein, Sheldon Bialis, Marsha Bram, Jack Cohn, Louis Cohn, Diana Cohn, Stanley Dolan, Samuel Dolans, Celia Eisenman, Regina Fox, Lily Friedman, Max Geffner, Hyman Ginsberg, Ida Goldberg, Benjamin Goldman, Norman Goldstein, Barbara Goldstein, Trouty Gollum, Dan Gurian, Fran Hassenfuss, Sarah Jacobson, Sidney Klein, Henry Kolb, Andrew Krauss, Gertrude Kapkin, Doris Levy, Isabel Levy, Walter Levy, Jeanette Mellison Levy, Rachel Milgram, Libby Mossberg, Gail Moss, Gerhard Munzer, Louis, Lois Munt, Gittel Nelson, Jenny Nigelis, Bill Oyer, Mang Parker, Nathan Perlstein, Bert Quint, Eleanor Raffeld, Mitchell Ralstein, Anne Ralstein, Lillian Rossini, Bernard Salida, Norman Schulman, Joseph Siegel, Louis Salko, Bernard Spiller, Anne Tamber, Irving Trachtenberg, Sidney Wax, and Sarah Weinberg. May all their souls be blessed with the blessings of eternal peace. Let us now join together in the Kaddish prayer. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba b'yalma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayechon v'yamechon v'chayeh d'chol beit Yisrael ma'agala v'zman koriv v'yimru amen yehei shlomo rabba min shamaya v'chayim olenu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru amen yehei shlomo rabba min shamaya V'chayim olenu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru, amen. Yitborach v'yishtabach v'yitpoar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh v'yitadar v'yitaleh v'yitalal shamei d'kudisha b'rechu l'eila min kol b'rechata v'shirata t'ushbechata v'nechemata da'amiran v'yalma v'yimru, amen. Yehei shlomo rabba min shamaya v'chayim olenu v'yal kol Yisrael v'yimru, amen. O se shalom bim ramav, hu ya se shalom, aleinu vi al kol Yisrael, vi imru, amen. We pray for all their souls. May they always find peace in eternity. Amen. And now the closing hymn is a special one to commemorate and to celebrate, but also to dedicate those who are now going through the most heinous acts imaginable by man, as we pray for, let there be peace on earth.
if you'll bow your heads for benediction. Now more than ever, dear God, we pray that you will bless us and watch over us. And dear God, may your face shine upon us to give us salvation and hope. Pray for the best and always the best, the best peace on earth so that we can all rest in our homes quiet and without fear. May this be so in our time. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Thank you, everyone.